Hello and welcome to Scriptures Unlocked. In this presentation, I'll be taking a detailed look at the garments of the high priest. The garments of the high priest. While many priests were involved in ministry at the tabernacle, there was only one high priest at any given time. The high priest represented all Israel and performed the role of mediator between God and the children of Israel. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 tells us this, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So there is indeed one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, and that one mediator is the man, Christ Jesus. And all the priests, all the high priests in the Old Testament foreshadowed or prefigured the work that Jesus is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. Aaron was the first high priest in Israel, and upon his death, the office of the high priest was transferred to his eldest son, and this was to be a statute throughout their generations. The new high priest, upon the death of his father, would then be consecrated to wear the garments of his predecessor. And this is what we are told in scripture, Exodus 29, verse 29. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be sons after him, to be anointed therein and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation, the minister in the holy place. And here is how it was actually fulfilled upon the death of Aaron. Numbers 20, reading from verse 23 onwards. And Jehovah spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor, by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up unto Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and die there. And Moses did as Jehovah commanded. And they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And notice what happened. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar, his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount. The high priest was attired in seven different pieces of linen garments. One, linen breeches. Two, linen coat. Three, a robe. Four, an ephod. Five, the girdle. Six, the breastplate, and seven, the mitre. All priests wore undergarments, a coat, a sash, and a turban, but only the high priests wore additional garments, which included a blue robe, the ephod, the breastplate, and a golden plate on the mitre when ministering before God in the tabernacle. So this is what we are told about the garments of the priests as instructed by God Almighty. And this We'll be taking a detailed look at the full chapter of Exodus 28, which outlines clearly the garments of the priests, and in particular, the garments of the high priest. Exodus 28 verse 1 says this, and this is God speaking to Moses, And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadav, and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, and an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, a mitre, and a girdle and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So here is a picture of the high priest's garments. Here you are seeing the mitre with the golden crown on it. You have the ephod, which is this apron looking like garment, which was made of blue, purple and scarlet. Here you are seeing the breastplate of judgment. You are seeing the blue robe of the ephod and you are seeing the coat, which was a white linen garment. And you are seeing the two shoulder straps of the ephod. So this is what the garments of the high priest looked like. The high priest garments were made 
for glory and for beauty. Because in addition to the fabric, which was linen, they contained gold and precious stones. These holy garments were to be worn when the high priest entered the sanctuary. Let's now look at the ephod. Exodus 28 verse 5 says this, And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, five materials, and they shall make the effort of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and fine twine linen with cunning work. And here you are seeing a picture of the four colors that were intricately woven to make the effort. You are seeing the gold thread in between the blue, purple, and scarlet, and the white, which represented the linen, fine twine linen. So the effort was made of five colors blue, scarlet, and purple. And these colors are significant. Blue speaks to heavenly, and it points to Jesus Christ as Son of God. The Gospel of John was written to prove that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Scarlet represents blood and speaks to the fact that Jesus is the Son of Man. In fact, the word Adam means red-blooded man. So scarlet speaks to Jesus as the Son of Man. Jesus took on flesh and blood so that he could be our sacrifice. Purple speaks to the fact that Jesus is of royal stock. Jesus is the heir to the throne. And the Gospel of Matthew speaks to the fact that Jesus is a son of David. He is from the house of Judah, the royal line. When we mix blue and scarlet, we get purple. So the three colors, blue, scarlet, and purple, speaks to the different nature of Jesus Christ. Blue speaks to the fact that he's from heaven. He's heavenly or divine. Scarlet speaks to the fact that he's a human being. And purple speaks to the fact that he's a, he's a divine son of God. He's royalty. Gold points to his divinity. Gold is symbolic of divinity. Linen, which is white in color, represents righteousness and purity, as well as Jesus' sinless humanity. Exodus 28 verse 7 tells us this. Speaking of the effort, it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof, joined at the two edges thereof, and so shall it be joined together. And you can see here, it, the effort had two gold rings that was used to attach it to the breastplate as we will see as we continue further in the presentation. Exodus 28 verse 8 says this, And the curious girdle of the effort which is upon it shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. So the girdle was a belt-like garment that was used to gird the loins of the priests. The girdle was a symbol of preparation and readiness to serve. It represented truth, righteousness, and faithfulness. As we can see in Isaiah 11 verse 5, it speaks of Jesus Christ. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. And Ephesians 6 verse 14 speaks of the whole armor of God. And we are told to stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Let's now continue to speak about the effort. Exodus 28 verse 9. God continues to say, And thou shalt take two onyx stones, and grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. So each of the twelve sons of Jacob, or Israel, were to be engraved upon the two onyx stones. The first six sons, according to their birth, were to be engraved on one of the stones, and the last six on the second stone. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial, unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before Jehovah upon his two shoulders for a memorial. And thou shalt make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the ends. Of wreathen work shall thou make them. 
and fasten the reading chains to the ouches. And here's a picture of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod with the black onyx stones engraved with the 12 names of the children of Israel. And here you're seeing a picture of the two shoulder straps being held together by the two gold chains. It is holding up the effort from the shoulder to the breastplate. The two gold chains represents the fact that we are securely attached to both God the Father and the Son, which means that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, according to Romans 8. And this we are told by Jesus when he said this in John 10, verse 27 to 29. Speaking of his disciples, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So the children of Israel were being carried upon the shoulder of the high priest. As you can see here, Jesus is dressed as the high priest, and he has the two onyx stones upon his shoulders. And the names of the children of Israel, God's people were engraved upon the Shoulder. So not only does the high priest bear the people upon his shoulder and upon his heart, he also, Christ, carries his people. They are engraved in the palms of his hand. And it is represented by the fact that his hands were pierced for us. The effort was an intricately woven apron-like garment with two onyx stones worn on the shoulders that were engraved the names of the 12 tribes of Israel signifying that the high priest bore Israel upon his shoulders. The high priest in the Old Testament typified and foreshadowed the work that Jesus Christ is currently doing in heaven as our great high priest. Viewers, the shoulder is a place of strength and where burdens are borne. Jesus Christ is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 as, as this. Isaiah prophesied this of Jesus. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So the government is represented by the people. Jesus is the one that bears rule and of dominion over God's people. And he bears the burden of government upon his shoulders. Just as in today's society, the head of government, whether it is a president or prime minister, bears the burden of the nation upon his shoulders, upon his heart, upon his mind. And there's a popular saying that says, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. So as head of government, as the person who is in charge, the leader of the government is have to be constantly thinking about how to improve the lives of his people. He has them on his heart if he's a good leader and he bears the burden of government upon his shoulder. Jesus Christ, as our high priest, always have us on his mind. He bears us on his heart, and he carries the burden of his people upon his shoulders. So everything about the high priest was the point to the work that Jesus Christ is currently doing in heaven. The Onyx Stones viewers were engraved the names of God's people as a memorial indicating that we are permanently secured being carried upon the shoulders of the Savior. Notice what we are told in Luke 15, verse 4 and 5. Jesus, speaking to the Jews, said this, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninth and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. As you can see in this picture, Jesus, having found that one sheep, that one lost sheep, puts it on his shoulder and bears it on his shoulder. Mankind viewers is that lost sheep. Jesus Christ bore the sins of the whole world upon his shoulders, which was symbolized by the fact of him bearing his cross. We are described in the, in the scriptures as being the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100 verse 3. Know ye not that Yehovah, he is God. It is he that had made us 
and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Jesus has created many worlds, but earth, as far as we know, is the only planet that has gone rogue. We are the only black sheep. We are the ones that have been lost. And Jesus said that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He left the celestial courts of heaven and came to this dark planet to save humanity from their sins. And having rescued us, he bears us on his shoulder for all eternity. So Jesus Christ, as our high priest, bears the burden of his people upon his shoulders. And this is represented by the fact that this sheep was placed on the shoulder of the savior. Let's now look at the breastplate. Exodus 28 verse 15 onwards tells us this. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the work of the effort, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen shalt thou make it. Four square it shall be being doubled, and a span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. A span, viewers, is the measurement from your thumb to your little finger. So it was to be four square, a span in length and a span in breadth. And thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And here is a picture of the 12 precious stones that were on the breastplate. You are seeing the first row, a sardius, which represented Reuben. And you can see the names of the children of Israel engraved upon the precious gems. Topaz, Simeon, Carbuncle, Levi. Emerald represented Judah. Sapphire was for Issachar. Diamond was for Zebulon. The ligure was for Naphtali. The agate for Gad. The amethyst for Asher. The beryl for Manasseh. The onyx was for Ephraim, and Jasper was for Benjamin. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Everyone with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen work of pure gold. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are, at, which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two wreathen chains shalt thou fasten in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the effort before it. So here you are seeing a picture of the breastplate with the 12 precious stones with the two golden chains and the golden rings. And thou shalt make two rings of gold and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the effort inward. And the two other rings of gold shall thou make and shall put them on the two sides of the effort underneath toward the forepart thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the effort. And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the effort with a lace of blue, that it may be above the curious girdle of the effort and that the breastplate be not loosed from the effort. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before Jehovah continually. And here is a picture of how the breastplate was connected to the curious girdle by a lace of blue. And it is highlighted there on screen. So the top of the breastplate was connected by the two golden chains and that was connected to the shoulder straps that are the two onyx stones. And on the bottom of the breastplate, you had the two gold rings that were connected to the curious girdle by a lace of blue, as you can see. So this is how the top of the breastplate was connected. It was connected by the golden chains to the shoulder strap with the onyx stones, and it was connected by the two golden rings. Exodus 28 verse 30 says this, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before Jehovah. 
and Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before Jehovah continually. So here it is repeated that Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart because Aaron prefigured the role that Jesus is currently doing now in heaven. Just as Aaron bore the breastplate upon his heart, Jesus Christ not only bears us on his shoulders, but he binds us very closely to his heart. We are precious to him. And this is why the breastplate had precious gems embedded to signify that fact. As our great high priest, Jesus is currently dressed as Aaron was with the breastplate of judgment upon his heart in the heavenly sanctuary, doing the work of intercession on our behalf. And you can see a picture of Jesus dressed as the high priest. He has on the turban with the golden plate or golden crown upon it. We'll get to that a little later. He had on the breastplate of judgment, which was connected to the ephod, which are the two onyx stones on his shoulders. And currently Jesus is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, interceding on our behalf before God the Father. The breastplate of judgment viewers was doubled to form a pocket for the Urim and the Tomim, which were used by the high priest to ascertain God's will in certain important matters. And this we find in Numbers 27 verse 21, which says, and he, referring to Joshua, shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before Yehovah. At his word, that is the word of the priest, shall they go out and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And here is a picture of the, the Urim and the Tumim. The Urim was this stone, and the Tumim was this stone. Here's another picture from the other angle of the Urim and the Tumim. The Hebrew word Urim simply means lights. And it was a stone kept in a pouch on the high priest's breastplate, which we have just read, used in determining God's decision in certain questions and issues. While the Tumim simply means perfection. And it was used in conjunction with the Urim to find out the will of God in certain important matters. Let's now look at the robe. Exodus 28 verse 31. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. And there shall be an hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the hole of it. As it were the hole of an abijan, that it be not rent. And beneath, upon the hem of it, thou shalt make the pomegranates of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, round about the hem thereof. And bells of gold between them round about. A golden bell and a pomegranate a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister. And his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before Jehovah, and when he cometh out that he die not. Let me just make a point here, because many persons have said that the high priest also had a robe tied around his foot in the event that he died in the temple. He had to be pulled out but there's no such reference in the scriptures. That is a Jewish tradition that has no place in scripture. And furthermore, no high priest in the scriptures have ever died going into the temple. So the scripture does not speak to the high priest having any robe tied to his foot. The only thing that was mentioned is that he was to have on a blue robe and on the end of the blue robe were to be alternating bell and pomegranate around the hem of the garment. And this was so the, the worshipers outside the temple could track the movement of the high priest as we will see as we proceed in the presentation. So there's no such thing in scripture about the high priest having a rope tied around his foot when he goes into the temple in the event that he died. There's no such mention in scripture. This is a picture of the blue robe. So the robe of the ephod was seamlessly woven from one piece of blue fabric with the blue emphasizing the fact that the high priest's authority was of heavenly or divine origin. The high priest's garments were holy, and this means that it should not be torn even upon the death of a relative. 
And this we find in Leviticus 21, verse 10 and 11. God said this, And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not uncover his head, nor rend his clothes. Neither shall he go in to any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. In Israel, there was a custom that when persons are mourning, they tend to rent their garments and pour dust and ashes upon themselves and sit in sackcloth. But the high priest was strictly forbidden not to rent his garments because they were holy and sacred. And this we find was done by Caiaphas, which we can read about in Matthew 26 when they had this kangaroo trial for Jesus Christ. Notice what happened here. Contrary to what God instructed the high priest not to do. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Jesus, answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? And Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter, he shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And notice what the high priest did. Then the high priest rent his clothes, which were just read, was not to be done, saying, he had spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold now, ye have heard his blasphemy. So going back to the blue robe, we are told that on the hem of the blue robe were placed alternating golden bills and pomegranates made of blue, purple, and scarlet. And we know the significance of those colors. The bells were so that the people could track the movement of the high priest in the sanctuary. And here's a picture of what the hem of the garment of the blue robe looked like. You have alternating bell and pomegranate shape in the colors of blue, purple, and scarlet. Similarly, we today are able to track the movement of Jesus Christ, our great high priest in the heavenly sanctuary, based on the prophetic markers given in scripture. And this we can know by looking at even Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. And this is taking place after Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he started his work as high priest. And notice that we're able to track his movements based on what John saw in the vision on the Isle of Patmos. Revelation 1 verse 12. John had a vision and John said, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, who is Jesus Christ. And notice how he was dressed, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And we know we can track the movement of Jesus when he went to heaven because the golden candlesticks here is located in the first compartment of the sanctuary, which is the holy place. So when John saw Jesus in that vision, Jesus was seen in the midst of the candlesticks. So Jesus was clearly in the holy place at that particular time when John saw him in vision. Later, we saw Jesus in Revelation 8 at the golden altar of incense and much incense was given to him to offer with the prayers of the saints that was in revelation 8 we are told in revelation 11 verse 19 that the ark of the testament was seen in heaven and we know that the ark of the testament or the ark of the covenant is located in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary so we know based on these markers in scripture that jesus moved from the holy place into the most holy place. And the high priest on earth during the Old Testament time would only enter into the most holy place once per year on the day of atonement. So door being opened in heaven and we getting a peek into the most holy place tells us that Jesus Christ was then doing his work of atonement in the heavenly sanctuary. So let's now go back to the hem of the blue robe. 
It had a bell and pomegranates. A pomegranate is a sweet and refreshing fruit with a thick red skin containing hundreds of edible seeds. It represents fruitfulness, posterity, and prosperity, which is God's desire for all of us as human beings. And here's a picture of a pomegranate. The crown of gold. Let's look at the crown of gold, which was to be worn by the high priest. This was to be worn at all times upon the mitre when the high priest was inside the tabernacle. This is what we are told in Exodus 28, verse 36. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the gravings of a signet, holiness to Yehovah. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts. And it shall be always upon his forehead that he may be accepted before Yehovah. And here is a picture of the golden plate or golden crown that the high priest had to wear. And on it was engraved Kodesh Yehovah or holiness to Yehovah. And you can see the blue lace that was to be tied around the forehead of the high priest. The high priest viewers typify Jesus Christ. So he had to wear the golden crown upon his forehead with the inscription, holiness to Yehovah, to symbolize that his thoughts were to be holy as a person he represented. And we know that Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is sinless. Jesus Christ is righteous. And the forehead is where our thoughts emanate, our frontal lobe. Hebrews 7 verse 26 tells us this, speaking of Jesus, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Let's now look at the other garments of the high priest, and in fact, all priests. So what we have looked at so far were the garments that the high priest specifically wore. All priests wore fine linen, which speaks to purity, righteousness, and holiness. So all priests, including the high priests, wore these garments that we are, going, we are going to be looking at going forward. Bonnets, which was a head covering, coats, and girdle. Exodus 28, verses 13 and 41 tells us this. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the might of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So these garments, viewers, were made of fine linen, which speaks to purity and righteousness, and were to be worn by all priests, barring none. So here's a picture of the coat, the linen coat that the priest had to wear. And you can see his loins or his waist was girt with a linen girdle. Let's now look at the linen breeches. Exodus 28 verse 42 and 43 tells us this. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. From the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and his seed after him. So when they entered into the tabernacle, they had to have on linen breeches, which was an undergarment. Again, viewers, white is a color of purity, which signifies and is symbolic of Jesus Christ's righteousness, which covers our sinfulness. So the priests had to wear linen breeches when they entered into the sanctuary to minister before God. And here's a picture of what the linen breach might have looked like. It was from their waist down to their thigh to cover their nakedness. And above the linen breeches was the linen coat that all priests had to wear. Let's now look at the ordinances for the Levites found in Ezekiel 44 verses 15 to 19. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, 
when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord Jehovah. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And notice what God then says. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments representing righteousness, purity, and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. Because sweat, viewers, reminds us of the curse. When Adam and Eve sinned, God said to Adam, by the sweat of thy brow shalt thou eat bread. So sweat is a reminder of the curse of sin. So in the sanctuary, the high priest and the priest had to wear linen garments, signifying righteousness, purity, and holiness. They were not to be clothed in anything that causes sweat. Verse 19 says, and when they go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered and lay them in the holy chambers and they shall put on other garments and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Interestingly enough, viewers, on the day of atonement, when the high priest brought the blood of the sacrifice in the most holy place, he was only to be attired in these white linen garments, the linen breeches, the linen bonnet, and the linen coat. Notice what we are told in Leviticus 16, verse 4, which speaks about the day of atonement. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, and that is the blood of these animals. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. So notice the word linen is emphasized. It is repeated because it points to righteousness before God. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. So the priests were to be dressed only in the linen garments when they entered into the most holy place. Similarly, when Jesus Christ offered his blood on the cross of Calvary, his outer garments were taken away and he was only clothed in his undergarments. Notice what we are told in John 19, verse 23 and 24. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, just like the linen garments woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, let us not rend it because the priest's garments were not to be rent, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled which said, they parted my raiment among them and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Finally viewers, after these garments were made, these holy garments. It was now time for the priests to be consecrated to actually serve in the tabernacle. Exodus 29 verse 4 onwards says this, and God was speaking to Moses, giving him instructions as to how the priests were to be consecrated. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall wash them with water at the lava. So notice what Aaron was attired in. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. And here, viewers, is a picture of the priest in the background and to the side. And Moses anointing Aaron, who was dressed as the high priest. In his hand, he had the mitre with the golden crown around it. He had on the 
breastplate of judgment, and on his two shoulders you are seeing the onyx stones fastened together by the golden chains. He had on the girdle, and he had on the blue robe of the ephod, and underneath that he had on the linen coat. You can see the alternating pomegranate and bells at the end of his blue robe. Jesus Christ is dressed as the high priest, as you can see behind me. He had on the mitre with the golden crown with the inscription, Holiness to Jehovah. He had on the breastplate of judgment. He had on the blue robe. Beneath that, he had on the linen coat. And beneath that, he had on his linen breeches. So the high priest prefigured, he typified the work that Jesus Christ is currently doing because Jesus Christ is our high priest. All the high priests who serve in the Old Testament era represented, signified, symbolized, prefigured the work that Jesus Christ will do when he ascended to heaven as our high priest. The colors, blue, purple, and scarlet, gold, and fine twine linen, points us to the different characteristics of Jesus Christ. Blue speaks to the fact that he's from heaven, just as how the sky on a clear day is blue. Scarlet points to his shed blood. Purple tells us that he is royalty. Gold speaks to his divinity, and the linen, fine twine linen, speaks to his righteousness and purity. Jesus Christ, viewers, is our high priest. He is currently interceding in the heavenly sanctuary on our behalf. It is now up to us to confess our sins because he is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it is important to note that only confessed sins can be forgiven. So we need to confess our sins while Jesus Christ is currently doing his work, his high priest work of intercession and mediation before his father. Because as 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 says, there is one God who is the father and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ became a human being. He shed his righteous blood so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. He was crucified, died and was buried. He resurrected and ascended. He was anointed as Aaron was on the day of Pentecost to serve as our high priest. He moved from the holy place to the most holy place in 1844 to start the antitypical day of atonement. And he's currently doing that work. But there's coming a time, viewers, when probation will close and Jesus will end his work of intercession. And at that point in time, as Revelation 22 says, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Because once Jesus ends his work of intercession before his father, all cases would then have been decided. And we'll have to retain our sins if we have not confessed them. So I want to urge you viewers to track the movement of Jesus Christ. He's currently in the heavenly sanctuary, in the most holy place, interceding on humanity's behalf. It is our job to confess and repent and turn away from our sins so that our sins can be forgiven. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and may God continue to bless us as we follow the work of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. Have yourselves a wonderful day.